Volume 146th Street, St. Clair Township. Point of House Fires. On January 27th, the Tenney family narrowly escaped their burning home. Everything. Between the water damage, smoke damage, fire damage, everything. We lost everything but the clothes on our, we were wearing that night. Four out of the five family members heard the smoke alarm going off, but not their 13-year-old son, Eric. He saw and felt it. Eric was born with aural atresia, leaving him completely deaf in his right ear. A volunteer firefighter of 40 years, Eric's dad knew the importance of installing a smoke alarm that would wake Eric, one that he could see and feel. It's for people who are deaf or hard of hearing like Eric and myself. I'm 100% deaf in both ears and I hear with a cochlear implant, but I procrastinated in getting this life-saving device. And many deaf or hard of hearing people do. And according to FEMA, it's for one primary reason, they're cost prohibitive. It could easily cost you $600. And each piece is sold separately. The unit includes several pieces, a traditional smoke detector on the ceiling, which transmits to a receiver equipped with a strobe. It's typically set on a nightstand like this one. Attached to it is a vibrating disc, which will shake the entire bed from underneath the mattress. Some units also come with a vibrating body-worn pager. There's been a push in recent years to get more of these life-saving alarms installed in homes. Insurance isn't going to cover it. Uh, there's not a funding source. People with hearing loss who need this equipment are in that situation, not because they don't want to be safe, but because they can't afford to be safe. The nonprofit organization Center for Hearing and Deaf Services wrote this letter to Pittsburgh Fire Chief Daryl Jones exactly six years ago on November 11, 2013 asking him if he was doing anything about fire prevention efforts for the deaf and hard of hearing. Much to my embarrassment, it was, uh, no, we weren't. Receiving that letter, Chief Jones applied for federal grant money to cover the expense for six consecutive years. Part of the reason he's been so persistent is because he understands the unique challenges the deaf and hard of hearing face. If you don't make it out in three minutes, then chances are you won't survive. Jones' persistence paid off. Just a couple of months ago, the Pittsburgh Bureau of Fire received a $1 million federal grant to provide roughly 2,500 households within city limits with the special smoke alarms. That This is not a luxury item. This is life or death for people. Eric's hearing device and prosthetic ear both burned in the fire. You're the tennies <laughs> say they're just thankful his special well, smoke alarm woke there. him up with enough time to escape. And if you need one, get it because he's leaving proof that it works. The grant also covers fire safety training, which smoke alarm recipients will have to attend. Now the city, along with the Center for Hearing and Deaf Services, are still working on how they will be distributing these life-saving alarms to the deaf and hard of hearing. If you think you could benefit from this device and you live within city limits, you can send them an email to get put on a list. We have that for you on our website, WTAE.com. Janelle? Elena, a wealth of information here. I know there's people at home probably saying, are there any affordable options out there for people who may need this special kind of smoke alarm, but they don't live within city limits? Absolutely, Janelle. The American Red Cross is a great resource. A few years ago, the nonprofit implemented a program called Sound the Alarm. Now, through that program, they will provide and install the special smoke alarms for the deaf and hard of hearing for free, regardless of your income or where you live. And a wonderful story. Elena, thanks so much for that information.